So I would another demo to do for a new little art society that I've been invited to demonstrate for. I'm going to attempt to do quite a large canvas, it's a, it's a two foot canvas, which for a two eye demo is quite a push. And it's going to be this scene here, um, which has these lovely bits of light going through it. So first of all I'm just going to show you how we do the drawing by gridding up and scaling out. And then when I paint it I'll be working with sponge rollers from the medium tones down to the darkest ones and then from the medium back up to the lightest, finishing with all these lovely highlights and puddles and sparkles of light right the way through and finishing with the brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide up my picture into quarters. I go halfway, halfway and halfway again. I do the same on the canvas, so here I've got to go halfway, halfway. You only have to be approximate. We haven't got to be absolutely accurate for this because even though we're doing figures, we can get those proportions right as, as we work. So, halfway, halfway, halfway again, to quarters. In this case, I can even see the stretcher slightly through the light there, look. So I can easily get those quarters right. Right, they've then got to correspond to here. So, for instance, here, at that joint here, is where that angle starts. If I bring that angle upwards, with the pencil from there, there's my angle, so I can easily get the same angle from there to there, and it stops just inside halfway here, so it stops about here, and that's this point here. So a bit like joining up the dots when you're drawing the comic magazines, faces in comic magazine, when you join the dots and a face appears, that's what we're doing here. That one comes just about halfway down here, and it's going to come all the way out to here, to there, and we've got that bit coming down, a bit of a tab there, it comes down slightly to there, where that mark is there, here, that's where the bottom of this umbrella part canopy comes. And that line's about halfway up here, so that one's going to be to there, curve. You could just use your, your, an arc of your hand like that to make the curves. It comes from halfway up here, that's here. I can make that mark. I can look at where it comes here. That one comes down there and it joins just below here, so that one comes to there and then again, this one's just inside and about halfway here again here, so it comes to there and look we've got the top of the umbrella already the parasol are already just about done as quick as that, just by one point to another it's points in space Again, if I want this part here, I come to there, the height of it is just below here, and it comes to about an eighth of the way up, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, eight, just down here, so that's the height of that one, and that point comes just below here, so we're now looking at and that finishes just inside here, there, where there's a tree comes down. We know that there's a tree that comes just here, and the width of that tree is about that. To scale, and this one is going to come from there to there. That's it, very loosely. And I draw by a series of marks. I gradually make my marks stronger and stronger until I know that they're just in the right place. I just feel my way like that. And you can see the jigsaw coming together. We're going to paint this like a jigsaw. We're going to put the right colours in the right shapes, in the right places, relevant one to another. So when I've got a colour on the roller, if it's this one, I'm going to put it wherever it is. And we fill these jigsaw places in at first, just blocking in the shapes and blending one over another so that they all start to link 
and then when I've got all of the mid-tones down to my darks and my mid-tones up to my lights, then I'm going to come back with a brush and start to really pick out the thicker paint in slabs of paint on the end of a flat brush, starting with a sponge roller, going onto the flat brushes at the end, with much heavier paint. So now I'm going to speed up the film and you'll just see me doing this drawing right the way through.
Well, that's the drawing ready, and it's not in every detail, it's just all the basic proportions and shapes. If we have a loose painting, and we can start loose and finish tight, we can't start tight and go loose very easily, can we? If you have a loose painting, we want to work loosely within it, then we still need fairly good structure and line and drawing. Not in every detail, just all of those various shapes that we're going to place the jigsaw pieces of paint within, the, the shapes of paint within. Um, and all that drawing must be fairly strong because if you're going to paint loosely within a, a, a tight drawing or a reasonable drawing, the loose painting will work. If you work within a very loose drawing, unless you're very good or experienced, you often find that you enhance the bad points or the bad parts of the drawing, which is not a good idea, obviously. So there we are, we're ready to start painting at the demo now. basic colours in, but I do want to be to the stage where I'm slamming in these colours and starting to bring the detail out. Now, giving you some hints, giving you some tips from the start, this is my suggestions, but if we start loose, we can finish tight. We can't start tight and go loose, can we? And I start with my mid-tones and work out to my darkest, then go back to the mid-tones and go back to my lightest, and I finish with my lightest to pass that round. So in the end, it's like I'm painting with light, it's, it's a wonderful way to work. So we start off very loosely, you go tighter and tighter and tighter, and building up the colours, building up the tones, and eventually painting all those lovely highlights at the end, which you can imagine for a landscape, something like this is fantastic, because it's just such a joy putting those pure colours on. Paints I'm using are, and again, I'll give you as many hints as I can today, people are trying to go away with their ears ringing. Um, have you got the acrylic? You can see how, how heavy body they are. Um, a nice full palette. When you first set the palette out, it's like a box of sweeties at Christmas, isn't it? Wow! <laughs> when you've got all those colours there, I don't use them all. Some people might say, oh, you need cheat to all the colours mixed. No, I only use the colours I need, but I've got them there directly, so I can relate to them very, very quickly. If we put the right colours in the right places, in the right shapes, relevant one to another, then almost what order you do that, but right colours, right places within the right shapes, rather than one to another, your painting will just appear like a jigsaw. It's so simple, but it's so obvious. But people start off just painting a little bit here, a little bit here, then they finish this bit, and then when they finish the painting, they suddenly find it's wrong to that bit. I'm going to try and keep the painting going overall like a jigsaw, like a patchwork and the painting will just appear. <coughs> These figures won't be there, then suddenly, well, there's a figure. It'll just happen as I start to put the shapes in. There is no one right answer in painting. And today I'm not going to say this is the only way. All I want to do today is enthuse you, get you a bit excited and show you something new to try and have fun with. Uh, you know, pa painting art has got to be fun. When I get into this, although I'll be under stress, I'll be having great fun just doing it, so you have to drag me out from my dream. I'll ask the questions if you want. So there we go, we've got starting loose, finishing tight, I'm in control, I can go as far as I want, I can go into total detail, or I can just leave it at any stage. 
watercolour artists coming to me in the years past, we've come to you to become loose women, um, or loose artists, and, uh, and the way I've done that is to say, right, we're going to do an acrylic ink background, all wet into wet, get some wonderful effects, and we're going to build it up with pastels. And we don't always get to the pastels, because they've enjoyed being loose with the acrylic ink so much, I'll just say, hang on, stop. And they're looking, wow, what have I done? Because they haven't been aware of being tight, they haven't been trying to do something, they've been building up to it and left themselves open to trying new things. And we've had some wonderful abstracts that way. And I mix up the paint, and then I will put my roller through the brush, so we don't waste any of the paint on the roller. So mix it all up, get the brush there, and roll through it like that. Okay? I'll do it on here, so you can see I roll through the brush, roll the paint out onto the roller. Start with the roller slightly damp, don't start with the dry roller, or you'll be, it, it, when you first start off with the painting it does use a lot of paint, it does, does use more. Not too much water in it, a you know, fairly heavy body, but I can paint quite thinly with the paint so I can have a, a glaze effect. I can use a roller very lightly to glaze over as well, or I can press harder and get a more impasto feel to it. Also I can put great lumps of paint onto it, I can just drip, uh, trickle it through. Um, very thick impasto paint and get a lovely textural effect on here, a bit like the, you know, the, the texturing on the ceiling. So we, we've got all those versus all ways of using. I can use the paint roller flat to get a block, I can use the edge to get a line, I can curve that line, or I can smudge with the sponge roller like that as well. So it's every single colour, as you probably know, has a hue. These good blokes here. Um, the yellow, cool yellow would be lemon yellow, and warm yellow would be chrome yellow. In other words, towards the warm or towards the blue. Yeah? Every single colour has that warm and cool in it. And it's very important that we use those because I'm playing those constantly here. In this country, especially, we've got a lot of humidity and dampness, so the distance is more blue than the foreground. So we're doing a landscape, all of those colours, of the lightness of warm ones there, will be cooler than the same colour in the foreground. So I push it back in normal daylight to bluer colours in the background, cooler in the background, and warmer in the foreground. When is the change of that? When would that be the opposite? You ready? Winter. Sun, sunset sunrise. Oh, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Sunset sunrise because then you've got the warms in the background and the cools in the foreground. So they will change then. So we've got a very blue green in the background there, but a very yellow green here. Let's start with the yellow green because it's easier for me to change the. I'll take some. Uh, This is towards the lemon yellow, so quite a bright yellow, but a little bit of, although it's a quite a bright yellow at this moment, I'm going to take it down into the midterms fairly quickly, but this is what I need now to roll my roller and get it started through the brush. And it takes a lot of paint just to get going. And there's not much paint in there at the moment, I just want to show you how thinly we can paint with that. And comes up in between here. Mix some more up and get going. Mottled, and you see just a few flicks that can get the effects of leaves straight away. Let's get now a cooler colour. I'm going to go towards a more turquoise green. I'm not even going to take my roller through the, through the brush at the moment. So we've got in our armoury rough against smooth. Go back here, just got that little bit there. Light against dark, warm against cool. So now we've got the colour circle, we've got the colour hues. Now we've got light and dark, we've got cool and warm, and we've got rough and smooth. So already now you've got a massive amount of things in your arrows to, to use. And the more I put cooler colours on here, the warmer those will look. The more I put warmer colours on here, the cooler those will look normally. All right, we want to go a bit cooler. I'm going to take some um, slightly warm, a mid-blue. I'm taking some... Uh, Cobalt and a little touch of ultramarine because I want to start going much cooler with these, with these leaves here. So I'm starting to use my effects here of warms and cools and textures I can put in you know, the finer textures of things with my brush later so I'm not too worried. So it's a bit dead, it should be a bit dead and flat at the moment as I paint. It will go make more and more sense as I go on. Uh, that's all right for that. Right, next colours. Let's come down to this area here. And it's comparative. 
So we've got a yellow ochre, quite bright yellows and oranges going on up here. But that's a lot greener, that colour down there. So I'm not going to bother washing my uh, roller out. Straight down into this little bit of water just to get the paint going. And I want a mixture. So I'm, I've got already, I've, I'm planning ahead. I've already um, got my green on the brush because the green had just been blue. So roll my roller through the brush so I get a nice even coating into the roller now. Drop my painting, especially my photograph, especially into the um, palette just to get more effect. <laughs> Let's see what we can do here. So it's we're going to put a mixture of these slightly dulled down warms here. In through there, up through there, even onto her arm here. Wherever the cut, when you put it on the brush, when you put it on the roller, use it. Don't keep going back. Now there's all these light mottled areas here, I'm not going to worry about those because I'm going to paint those in later, all the light areas are later. I'm leaving just a very slight bit of white there, just so I, because I know I'm going to gradually, I will lose the, the drawing as I build these up. So I'm going to um, just leave the odd little bit of white here and there, just so I know where the drawing was. Just want to start to glaze a few colours. This is where I can get these lovely effects of glazing. Uh, yeah, looks like this. See that's a longer painting there. A bit more pure colour, a bit more to the, to the pinks there. Wherever it is, it's on my roller, so wherever it is I've got to put it on now. Yeah. Right, starting to work down now to deeper tones. And you can see I'm, my, my brush marks, all my, and I treat this as a brush, use your brush in the same feeling of the object you're painting. So if your brush marks are very, for um, instance, on there, each brush mark is about the leaf or about the petal I've done. Don't just paint a long arms, a long things, paint across them as well. A tip for water for you, if you're doing a very reflective water, you can see on there, if it's very reflective and smooth, then do your, your um, reflections, the depth of the water first, do the depth of the colours in the water and the reflections first and then paint the surface at the end, the smooth water. If you're doing rough water, then it's a totally different matter. It's much more gestural, and you're using a lot more smaller marks. And that's where you come back to that business of whites. You can start with your darker colours and work right up to your highlights, but do all your highlights with the very light tints first, and reserve white to the end. If you even need it, you might need it. But it's so important to get that sparkle, is to use the very light tints of very light blue, pink, greens, one against another. It's not just whites, photographs will bleach them out, all those little light colours, there's hardly any white in that one at all, all of these are pure little light colours. And at the end of the painting you can't go whiter than white, you can't go blacker than black, so if you've used your white earlier you're stuffed, aren't you? So save those till the end if you need them at all. I'll keep trying to give you as many tips as I can. I'll get some really nice darks going here now. Much, much warmer green. A little bit of that sienna into that. It's got a really lovely deep warm. And I'm letting it go mottled deliberately. I want to get right down to my towards my middle uh, darker tones, so mid-tones down towards the darker now. When I put the lights in on top of this it will really show. That's what I want to do today, just get some of the painting done so you can get the chunk of it all done, and get the feel of it, and then again you'll be able to go back to the video later. Put a lot of cream of new thought down here. Right round there. The dark's coming out through the lights here. Darker under there, a bit darker under that chair there. Her body. And as I do these jigsaw shapes, well, I guess like tongue twisters, jigsaw shapes, um, you will hopefully gradually see things start to appear.
not too much water. If I, do, so if I need to wash my roller, I will dry it out with a, um, a, t a, a towel first. Light against dark, warm against cool, rough against smooth, bearing those things in mind all the time when I'm doing this. If I see a colour going on somewhere else, I've got to put it in now. Noticing I've missed a figure out here. Okay, we'll put him in now. It's, um, you'll remember doing just children uh, comic books where they had join the dots up and a face appears. Ooh. Yeah. When you're drawing, think about it like that. The salient points in space. When you're starting your drawing, the first two points denote your entire painting. So that's why we make a frame to look through. Wherever that head comes there and, and in there on this picture. So if it's there, and I've measured halfway, 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 you can see on the photograph I've actually done that. I measure up my canvases to halfway's quarters. Then I work out where the important things are coming relevant to these marks at the side, like a grid. You can draw a grid if you want to, but just make sure that you measure up to your grid outside. When you've got those two points, you know that that's the composition you want. You've chosen that composition and then everything else has to fit to there. So I then do a whole series of little crosses and marks and angles and gradually join those up. And that way I get a whole and complete drawing. It's a very simple way of drawing, but you know, it's necessary if you want to just get the scale right. You can make a lovely loose painting if you're good enough by painting without drawing at all. But if you want to be more successful and have a better chance, have a reasonable drawing to start with and work loosely within it. If you work loosely within a bad drawing, and make the bad things even worse. It looks abysmal, I can tell you. So here, try and get a reasonable drawing to start with. It will help you. Let's get the slot darker down here. Really start to get some of these lovely dark colours going on. And you can see this texture I can get. I'm deliberately using these marks and directional strokes. I'm not going one way. If I was doing a sky and I wanted to make more of the sky, I have one here that I can show you that with, but say I had a lovely blue sky coming out here with clouds coming out from smaller to larger as they come, then to enhance the brush strokes in perspective would help lead my eye in. In the same way if this was a beach scene, to make my brush strokes come in perspective would help give distance in the painting. So be aware of your marks and where they're going. We tried this roll technique with oil, Peter, as well. That's the problem. How do you wash out a roll with oil? Yeah. That's one reason I don't use oil, is because I want you to sustain me. You, you can't wash it. Yeah. You could do it, but it's such a mess. Yeah. You'd have to wash it out almost every single colour you're using, whereas with the acrylics, I can let the thought let you go. So it isn't one for oils, this. No. You can use a sponge with oils, but you know, you're better off with a water base like watercolour or. So, and my answer to that would really be a no for oils. Um, right, I want to go warmer still. I need to really start to get some of these figures started. Have you ever done an acrylic underpainting with oils on top? Yes, very, very useful. Like I say, you can't paint acrylics over oils, but you can do the oils over the top. And let's say I wanted to do a um, a garden scene of Burton I just saw this one, I probably last used that years ago. But when I want to paint very, very quickly and have it dry, then I can paint the whole underpainting of the, uh, of the gardens with the ac acrylics and then go in with the much brighter colours, the stronger colours of the oils afterwards. The oils do tend to be a bit, quite a bit stronger. How many coffees? Yeah, if you want to have a break, I'm just going to keep going. So if you want to come and talk to me or look at the colours or ask any questions, go ahead. I'm just going to keep painting, otherwise I won't get enough done for you. Yeah, 
Right, this is where you should start to see things happening now, because you're just beginning to bring those forms out, the misty shapes there. But now I want to go on with the brushwork, and this is where I'm going to start slabbing colours in, and it will be very effective now. Then. But I haven't worked down to my complete dark, so I'm just going to put a couple more darks in, just a little, little bit darker there, because I need a bit more. Um, I will use a little bit of black now, I haven't been doing much of. So I've gone from my medium tones out to my, uh, down to my, towards my darkest, and then up towards my lightest, but the very lightest I'm going to put on with, um, let's just indicate some of these dark shapes with the blacks, and you'll see how that then brings out the, the darker colours straight away. Mm -hmm. so, you, know, you didn't see those dark colours really until I do this. Uh, just hint at things like the chairs. I don't want to, I'm not going to paint more than just a hint where they are at the moment. I'm going to start blocking in. Now, not only are we painting um, actual shapes, but we're painting negative shapes as well. So it's very important that I remember the negative shapes within these pieces too. Let's just for the fun of it, I'm going to go straight to the pure white, just for the hell of it, just to show you how we can start to paint with these negative shapes and start to bring things out. Um, let's see that one's there. I'm going to be very, very crude, and I shall, I shall lighten all of these up and be a lot more delicate later. But I just want to start showing you how we can use colours around forms as much as within to um, hint at what we've got in the background here, tree there, figure there. So the outside of shapes are as important as the shapes within. That's, and I'm just going to use white for the minute just to bring out, to help use these and hint at the, I'm not going to start painting every little dot every I across every T. just hint at these things and I can gradually go into more and more detail as I go along. Tickling it. Just, yeah, just tickling the colours, just, it's, it's, it's all, but it's quite, it's quite strong, it, it's, um, I'm still slabbing as I call it, I'm still slabbing. But it, it's the difference between heavy opaque paint and the thinner paint underneath. I just love strawberries and cream, you know, the cream on the strawberries. Using this lovely heavy body medium, because we talked about oils, now we're talking so about... So is this heavier than what the background was? No, it's the same paint, but it's used more thickly. It's used a la primer. It's used straight in. Just with water? No water at all. But if I had... If I wanted a fine line, and I might have to have a finer mix, obviously, but at the moment it's just... Um, it's just the pure paint straight from the palette. We usually put something on our Facebook page about you know visiting artists and stuff. Are we all right? Put it to me in the photographs on that we've taken. Well, please do. I yeah. mean, I yeah. will send you the link to the film so you can actually put that, that link on. Yeah, yeah, Which would be the best way, won't it? And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, please. My pleasure. <coughs> so it's, it's so nice to be invited. Hopefully, I'll see you all again. But, mm -hmm. So even if you come as a group of the garden or whatever, you see the figures just starting as I work yeah. up. Yeah. I'm painting around yeah. things. And it's amazing how much colour there is going on in here. Um, just one stroke at a time. Try and keep it simple. Don't overdo. Just find those shapes and colours. And if, and if the thing would just appear, it's, it's just, you know, if you hinted it, and their arm just sort of starts to appear. I've got to get these proportions right a bit more later. But you see how I'm deliberately not going along the form all the time. I'm making sure that I, I cover areas. And this is what I want you to see, this lovely way of being able to work loosely like this and just gradually bring these forms out. 
Well, I need to stand back. I mean, yeah. Another reason I use long handled brushes like this is because I can paint like that. And you can see it can do. So I will have a sword fight. I will keep coming back and then going back and having a dabble, then coming back. Um, that's the only way I can really see it. So when you've got a colour on your brush, if you see it somewhere else, again, go, go there and let's get it in. You've really got to look for these colours. That is so important to really look. Just one colour changes all the others. Mm -hmm. The more I do now, so the longer I have to do now, the more you're going to enjoy this because you'll, you'll see I'm adding more and more and more, finding all these lovely colours in here. Yeah. Yeah. The trees, I can start to do texturing in the trees now if I want to. Start to put leaves into there. <laughs> yeah. Watch these colours, see how one colour brings another out. You start to make sense now? You see the way loose and gradually, gradually, gradually tighten up the shapes in the drawing and this thing will start to appear. And as I then play with the colours, I need a stronger <coughs> orange here because that's too light. So I need to really start to bring out one colour to another there. If I've got that colour there, where else is it? Is it happening down here? Yes. So I've got to start looking all over the painting where it's happening. Is it happening up here? Yes, it is. Um, Those light tones, are you mixing those with white? I am now. I, I put white on deliberately at the beginning just to show you how the light would work against the dark. But now, yes, all, all, of the, all of the tones I'm working down from white now, I'm mixing. Um, it's quite subtly in. Just one mark for her thumb. I'll do as few marks as possible. Saying the most with the least, in other words. Slabs of colour in, in the right shapes, approximately. And I can, I can gradually narrow down more and more and more. Let's have a bit of fun. Let's try some of that. Somebody mentioned something bright pink earlier. Let's have a go with some of that. Just for the fun of it. It's called Opera Rose. Julia sat at the front here in the photograph. Called Opera Rose, and the trouble with it is that you can put about half an inch on, and when it dries, it just disappears. So it's, a, it's an okay colour for, for, hint, for tinting with, but it doesn't. It tends to disappear, so it's not an ideal. But it is a lovely one to use on something like this. I'll use a bit more um, magenta with it just to make sure it's strong enough. That really pops out. That. Yeah, again, it's one colour against another, you see, so <laughs> it's like this pink down here. That lovely bit of red there, there's a bit more magenta going into that just here. And one or two little colours like that can just again totally change things. Good, I'm, I'm, I'm more pleased that you're seeing this now because I'm just getting to a stage where you can see the pleasure of doing this and how, and the, the, how these warm and cools work. Now this is burnt sienna and it's a much warmer, plainer brown than these ones going on in the background here. So it's going to make my reds, if I use it being a duller brown, it's going to make my reds shine out more. So I'm deliberately playing opposites of colour circle and also um, the colour hues at the moment with this warm. I didn't have to use a sponge roller. I could have done all the background building up with brushes in the same way, you know, very roughly. Uh, and if I want to really get things, let's take some very deep purple here. And it's a much cooler colour than the red. So it's actually really going to. And then having played that purple here, I'm going to go cooler still and pick up on some Prussian blue, bring that Prussian blue down through here, which is way much cooler than the purple, and look at the difference that makes. So pure colours, just hinting at things, 
up here we need some of that going on to get more depth there. Now I will carry on working on this because it's such a, um, a detailed picture. I'll probably work on this for a good you know, another day, perhaps. Much deeper green. This is sap green, and much warmer green I haven't used yet. That warm green in there is going to make a lot of difference to the reds. To the depth it gives the reds. So we're playing the opposites again, but I'm using a warmer green deliberately here. We're going to get back. It comes alive, doesn't it? Yeah, How long we got? Yeah. You can see. <laughs> Carry on as long as you want. And just come on. But the point, I hope now you see how it can work. Yeah. As you can see the other pages and how they finish up. And you said, when do you stop? Well, you can see a, a bit now when I will stop because you can say, well, how far? When is it actually working? I mean, you know, greens. I'm looking at where these colours go um, under there. Really look for the colours, really enjoy. I should say, I tend to use the words colour singing because I think painting is such a music, <coughs> musical thing, it's orchestral. You know, you've got the little tiny notes of the cymbals and you've got the big notes of the big bass drum with the big colours. And so, you know, I often have music on in the background when I'm painting and it certainly does affect the paintings. Um, I think really I don't need to do more. Well, no, I mean that's just that's just amazing. Yeah. But you'll see this finished later. Yeah. So you can go back and see the film right through. Yeah. And um, I mean, considering you need to put brush to palette uh, to the canvas until well, twenty past. No, that's the thing. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting a bit worried for you. That's it. <laughs> and that is just amazing that you can yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw the dream. Yeah. Yeah. And then look at that now. I know, the lights there, yeah. But that is just amazing, it looks really so well. Uh, so I say, yeah, thank you very much. It's been, no, a, real, it, it's been a real treat. When you're saying you're painting it's yes. things like this that actually keep me going because mm -hmm. it gives me more motivation. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. for it's it's fun. Fun. I mean, we've, we've got this till half past, so if you want to get there. Thank you, everybody. Oh, God, I love, I love it now. Well, uh, it's a couple of days now since I did the demo, and in this light, it looks very different. So I want to continue into this and almost totally change it actually. I'm going to really build it up with heavy paint now.
Well, I've gone as far as I want to go with this one, I think. It's um, still very loose, but I've been pushing in the colours and slabbing them on and having fun with the paint, still keeping that fluidity going.